What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the hardworking happy hour. I'm Sean. And I'm Catherine. And as always, we will be breaking down all things trades, entrepreneurship, and turning your creativity into a passion career. And it feels good to be back in the podcast studio. We were out last week at HNA, Hardscape North America. Yep. Catherine, how'd you enjoy the trip? I loved it. I had a great time. You did? Yeah. What was your What was your favorite part? Um... I have to say meeting all the people. The people. The people, the people were great. And for anybody that doesn't know what that is, uh, you know, hopefully you listened to last week's episode with Dan Preston of Preston Hardscape Design. Yeah. And that was at the conference at HNA, Hardscape North America, the largest conference for patio boys and gals uh, <laughs> across the world. Yeah. I mean, it maybe not the way. world, but it's big. Oh, I wonder if there's bigger ones abroad. Maybe. We should go to one of those and then learn all the their tips and tricks and bring them over here. That's a pretty good idea because they say a lot of like the uh, design stuff Trends starts start. in Europe. Yeah. Then it takes like five, 10 years and it gets to America. We should do that. I think we should too. Okay. All right. Well, see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, we'll have to plan that. Uh, but I think it is a good uh, idea. Yeah. So you enjoyed the the show? I did. I loved it. It was great. I didn't. I wasn't really quite sure going into it because I've been to a lot of deck things, no hardscape things yet. Yeah. This was the first hardscape thing I'd been to, and the first time you went, right? Yeah. To this one. Yeah. Um. So it was great. It was. It was so nice. So many people recognized you. That was fun. <laughs> that was really nice. I, I was really shocked by that. Yeah. I was. It was. Uh. And the coolest thing was a lot of people said, "Hey." We love your podcast. Yeah. And I was like, that's awesome. Because yeah. as we've mentioned before, we're just, we're speaking to a black void here. Yeah. There's no one else here. <laughs> in case you guys didn't know that. Yeah. So it was cool to uh, meet some of these people in person and, you know, hear what they like about it, hear what they, uh, well, we didn't hear anything they don't like about it. Yeah. If there was anything, they didn't, they didn't tell us. They didn't say anything. They were very kind people. They were very nice. <laughs> yeah. They didn't want to hurt our feelings. Except one guy, we were like, oh, you like the podcast? And he's Because he said he recognized us. And then he was like. What did we say? He said, oh, I recognize you guys from the podcast. We're like, oh, I like the podcast. And he's like, I haven't listened to it yet. <laughs> yeah, but he recognized it <laughs> he us recognized from it. it. So that was cool. That was cool. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll get him as a listener. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe one day. If you're listening know. today. Yeah. Let welcome. us know. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was a really good time. We yeah. went for a couple of days and met so many people that we know from online that we've talked with that, yeah. you know, you feel like you really know, but. You don't really know them till you get to meet them in person and you get to chop it up. You get to talk shop. Yeah. And uh, that was probably like the one thing, uh, the feedback about the podcast that I thought was the most uh, interesting was that people really enjoy the laid back nature of this, that it's just like, you know, uh, they might not have somebody to just chop it up with talk shop at the end of the week. So, yeah. you know, they can kind of feel like, uh, hey, you know, not alone. I'm here. Dealing with issues. Yeah. We all are. We all are. But we all get through them. Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Uh, since last week, we didn't we didn't have any drinks. Yeah. We might have had coffee or something, but what do we got? This week, it's a very special week here in the Philadelphia tri-state area because the Philadelphia Eagles are undefeated and the Phillies have gone have made it to the World Series. And as of tonight, they will be playing their first game. This will be out on Monday, so there'll be two games in then. But tonight, they're playing their first game. So we are having the traditional Philadelphia beverage, which is called a citywide. Yep. It is the very high-class drink of a PBR and a shot of whiskey. Okay, here's your shot of whiskey. Thank you. <laughs> and you cannot chicken out on this. <laughs> I might take like half of it. Nah, that's fine. Okay. Also, it's like in an airplane bottle, so kind of hard to drink. Also, yeah. I'm a little sick. I don't know if I should. Or maybe whiskey's good for you when you're sick. It definitely. That, like that a, used to be medicine. Yeah. It still you're is right, medicine for medicine. a lot of people out there. <laughs> take your medicine. I think this is the first shot we're taking on this podcast. Yeah. So, uh, Very, this could go off the rails. This might go off the rails. <laughs> and it, it's been a, two weeks since we've been in the podcast studio doing yeah. the podcast. So I'm excited to go completely off the rails. Oh, yeah. And uh, just get, you know, some really squirrely energy out. And but besides that, we do have some good stuff to talk about. <laughs> so. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Citywide. Citywide. Ah. 
I took a very small sip of that. Oh, <laughs> so God. <sorry. laughs> yeah, you really punked out there. I did. I really don't like whiskey. That was pretty Ooh. good. I've never had the Tennessee honey. I, th- Jack I thought Daniels. I did. I I wussed out a little bit because I thought this might be a little bit easier for my, for my, my, my delicate taste. <laughs> yeah. Um, the honey's probably good for you, too, to you know soothe the yeah. throat. So it's, it's really going right, to be a big week wise. for Philly sports because tonight, Phillies World Series. Tomorrow, yeah. Phillies World Series. Sunday, no birds. World Series, but the birds are the on. Birds. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, World Series. Thursday, birds. birds. Friday, Saturday, if needed, Phillies. Yep, 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 yep. So, but they're going to beat them in four, so... It's very exciting. Maybe. It's so fun to be a fair weather fan because I have not. I did go to a Phillies one Phillies game this you did? this year. One, nice. yeah. Uh, we were in like a fancy box though, so I didn't pay attention oh, to it nice. at all. I stayed inside and watched. Um, I think the Sixers game on TV in the stadium okay. and ate some snacks. But if you're a fair weather fan, it's so fun. Right now, it's so exciting. Yeah. Everyone's so excited, and there's like palpable just yeah, energy. energy in the air yeah. in Philadelphia. So it's cool. And they call it Red October. Yeah, it's like a lot. <laughs> as it's soon so as I fun. heard that. I've been saying it nonstop. <laughs> I've using it as an excuse at home all the time. Sarah will be like, hey, uh, can you do this? I'm like, hon, it's red October, okay? <laughs> we don't have time for that. The Phillies need us. Uh, it doesn't really work out that great, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it's still fun. Okay, so... All right, enough sports. This is the sports. Enough sports, yeah. <laughs> sports. Enough sports talk. Uh, okay. Right, so what was your favorite part of h and My favorite part was, believe it or not, the people. Are you going to say the people? I thought <laughs> the you might people. say the people. <laughs> so... It was, it's really cool to just go and like, if you've never been to a trade show like this, to just Mm -hmm. see how big it is. Yeah. It's like unbelievable how much stuff is there. And there was a couple like cool little things that we saw that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. A lot of the stuff that is more affiliated with stuff that we already use, Mm -hmm. like we've already seen, we've seen it online. They weren't unveiling like a lot of new products or anything this year. So, um, but it's just cool to like walk around, see what's out there. You might find one or two like little gems of like a supplier or right. a tool or something that you've never seen before that is just perfect for what you do. Yeah. And it spans like the whole hardscape and green landscape industry in general. So it's really cool. Yeah. You'll definitely enjoy your time if you've never been to a show. And the first time I went to one, I was like, I was just so blown away. And it was just like such a cool experience. I think no matter what you find at the show, by talking to people, by being around that energy, like you're going to leave feeling motivated to just get out there and kill it. That is so, so true. It's so cool to be around so many other people that like love the same thing that you are doing. Because I feel like work can, it can eventually feel like monotonous if you don't, if no one else is like as passionate as you are or like, like kind of like we are speaking into a void into this podcast. If you're just constantly talking to your friends about pavers or whatever, they're going to be like, all right, man, cool, whatever. Yeah, no one cares, dude. No one cares about your paver, dude. Yeah. But, um, but to be around so many other people that are so passionate and are just like artists when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's really, really exciting. It is really exciting. And... That lawnmower caught on fire. That was pretty exciting. Too. Yeah, we didn't see that, but that would have been so cool if we it was, did see it, it. Yeah, it was the talk of the town. Everyone yeah. was talking about it. An a electric, DeWalt electric mower. Like a like a zero turn motor mower. Sit on yeah, rider. Like the big guys. Caught on fire. Like fully <laughs> like, engulfed. Like very on fire. Yeah, like the most on fire it could possibly catch. That is going to be bad for them, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Somebody's going to get fired whether it was their fault or not. Oh yeah, definitely. Um... So, I feel like it's not good for not only them, but like for electric motors, oh, electric mowers yeah. as a whole. Yeah. Everybody else is probably pretty pissed too. Like, oh. Yeah. You guys should have figured that thing <laughs> yeah. out because now you're making us all look bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we had a great time. We met a lot of people. We yeah. made a lot of cool connections and deepened some connections that were already existing. Yeah. What else we got this week, Catherine? Uh, what about h and You know, I don't know. What else? Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the, the disrespect. Oh, the disrespect? <laughs> Which disrespect are we talking? To you? To me, yeah. Are we going to go? Are we, we just, <laughs> what, are we just going to dive right into that? I thought that's what you were bringing up. I'm, I don't I don't need to talk. I mean, okay, we can so, touch on it. We're not, I'm not going to say any names, obviously, but I'll, we can touch on it. We can touch on it? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. 
you probably need to get this this whole <laughs> why don't you just go on a, i feel like you need a venting session about this, this whole could be, this sexism might, yeah this might be my venting se- i i don't want to go to it is- because i don't want to be the like the face of like female hardscaper because i'm certainly not and and i don't want to have to take on the plight of like people being rude to me because that's not i don't want to be a victim however <laughs> <laughs> There were two separate instances at this hardscape convention where like people just straight up ignored that I was even a human standing there with Sean just so they could talk to Sean. And it was it was like the rudest anybody's ever been to me in my whole life. And the one guy like I went to even shake his hand and he just completely ignored me. And that same man did it like like two to three times that entire time because we kept seeing him. And he loves Sean, so he was like, he was around for sure. Yeah, and, just added uh, me on Facebook, actually. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. Friended yeah. me. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And uh, at one point, even reached like I was sitting. We were sitting in a booth. <laughs> I, was, I was on the outside, and Sean was on the inside of this booth. And this man reached over me to shake Sean's hand, and then all the other people who were men at the table didn't even acknowledge that I was a person sitting at the table, which I think is a very interesting way to do business because. He doesn't yeah. know who I like, I, and I certainly don't expect him to know who I am. But like, you should still be kind to people and like acknowledge that they're there. I'm a hardscaper, just like everybody else at that convention. I have just as much say in what par- products we buy that everybody else does. So you got that right. And uh, this man just he and it was there was another man that th- did basically the same thing too, and it was just wow, it was yeah. astonishing. Yeah, it they weren't even rude to you; they were nothing to yeah. you. <laughs> You didn't even exist yeah. to them. Which is, an, I, and a lot of people think that I am the wife. Everyone thinks, like, and a lot of people do bring their wives to these trade shows. So everyone who, like, they don't know who I am. So they're like, oh, she just, she's a lady here. She must be somebody's wife. Can't be a hardscaper. Can't, pro- can't possibly be a Can't hardscaper. be involved in business decisions. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. So I'm, I assume that he thought that I was your wife. But even if it had been Sarah there. And yeah. Sarah's not involved in the business. And to my knowledge, she probably doesn't care that much about hardscape products. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so even if it were Sarah standing right there, it still would have been incredibly rude. So yeah. I just feel like that's a very interesting way to handle business. And I think that this industry needs a shakeup because those were the two most blatant times that it happened. But there were other times where it was like, just a know, little bit, just like subtly, like cutting me out of a conversation or like boxing me out of a circle. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, very interesting. <laughs> very you said the industry way. needs a shakeup. I feel like you are, you're kind of leading that charge I'm gonna to be the shake shake-up. it up. I, I feel like you're the shaker. I'll, I, yeah. Has I feel, rough. one thing I have learned about you probably <laughs> over the past like week or so, you are very driven by vengeance. I am. <laughs> Somebody double crosses you, watch <laughs> out. Catherine's going to come for you and she doesn't care who she gets as collateral yeah. damage. She's taking you down. I just, Yeah. Hey. If I have a good reason to, I think that I will. Because <laughs> that, like, man, that was that was just, it's so rude. I just can't imagine being in that position where you're just that blatantly rude to another person. I and thought, I'm not going to name names, but if DM me and I'll... <laughs> then, yeah, she'll tell I'll you. I'll tell you who it was. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, so the first time that it happened... I didn't I didn't realize that it had happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, cuz I was I was talking to him, we were engaged in a conversation. And maybe mm-hmm. and then even when you told me, I was like, you know, maybe he was just like locked in on me and and yeah. the whole world faded away <laughs> from his <laughs> peripheral. But then yeah. when we were at dinner, you were like you were literally, I was trapped like a demonized <laughs> rat in this booth and there was four people sitting there and he literally like did he hit you in the head with his <laughs> yeah. elbow like I he, think he like face palmed me and pushed me he, ba- further he basically away. had to like you were <laughs> you were like right in front of him closer to him than me yeah and he like reached right across you <laughs> and then proceeded to shake the next two hands and didn't even he kind of like for one second was like <laughs> like gave you like a little bit of like a nod like a oh hello mm. and that made me because this might be a fault of mine. I always, I always see the good in people. Yeah. I always, I always give them the benefit of the doubt. Sure. Maybe he was intimidated by you. A powerful lady in the hardscape industry. (laughs) 
What could be more intimidating? Oh, yeah. What do you think? Definitely. No, I don't think so. You know, okay. <laughs> All right. I don't think that was it, but maybe. But thank it you for be. trying to make me feel better about it. Okay. I don't think I need but, to make you feel better. I think that yeah. you are, I think you seek out this, these vengeance opportunities <laughs> to like drive you. Maybe, Would that be accurate? Yeah, maybe I do. Yeah. Is this a common yeah. thread in your, in your life? Did this happen to you it, in commercial real estate? Here's the thing that I, after thinking about this at length. Yes. I do seek out opportunities where I am like the only female in the room and what, I don't know if I seek it out, but I have, I find myself in that position very often, like in commercial real estate or in sailing. Like we just went to a boat show, me and my husband, yeah. my husband has never sailed in his life. He doesn't know a single thing about sailing, <laughs> nothing. I've been sailing my entire life. We go to this boat show. Not one person approached me. Every single person approached him and we're like, Oh, were you looking for a boat? Do you want to buy a boat? Blah, blah. Do you need these parts? What do you need? Blah, blah. Pat doesn't know a thing. He's like, yeah. You know, he's yucking it up with these guys. But it made me think. I was like, I what is it about me that That's seeks out these things? Like, I, yeah. I don't know. Everything that I do, I like, I don't know. I like what I like. And it's all male-dominated industries, I guess. That's very interesting. But uh, I like, you know, maybe vengeance is my thing. And now <laughs> yeah, it's going to fuel just me to... Out. Who knows? What are you going to do with this vengeance? How are you going to channel this and drive you to <laughs> something? I haven't decided yet. But okay. I, just, I just want... <laughs> I what don't want other it? women to be treated like this in the industry. So I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that means, whether it means like seeking out other lady hardscapers and like forming some sort of community. Like a union. And you guys we, are going to unionize. We're going to unionize. And then we're going to take down that one company that that man owns, I think. Yeah. I think that might be it. That might be the move. That is, it is very interesting because we've gone to quite a few uh, trade shows. And the first one was Deck Expo. Yeah. Last, I don't know, November. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't even like considered. I thought that enough people like kind of knew who you were because, you know, you were on our Instagram. And so anybody that like yeah. knew me, I felt like would probably know who you were at least. And Anthony was there as well. So it wasn't like it was just me and you. Mm -hmm. But just the like pure disbelief in people's faces when they were like, oh, you must be Sean's wife. Yeah. And they're like, no, no, I'm not. And they're like, oh, you must be Anthony's wife. <laughs> and they're like, no. And they're like, w they're like, w w w what, <laughs> what are you doing? You're unattended? Yeah. How? Are you lost? Are you lost, little girl? Are you lost? And <laughs> that was kind of eye opening. Like, yeah. um, it's super interesting to like, that's just like a blanket, like kind of feeling across the industry that yeah. it's not. It's not like doesn't come from a malicious place. I don't think it's not like this is a lady. We have to, you know, scathe them from our industry. It's just like they go into it with this mentality that you have to be somebody's wife. Like you yeah. can't be a a contributing member to this <laughs> industry, yeah. which is which is super weird. Yeah. And I mean, I like I to a certain extent, I do understand because like when we were looking around at this hardscape convention there there are women working the booths, but there are very, there were very few women like walking around looking at things. Yeah. And if they're like the couple women that I did meet, they were people's wives. So yeah. but, like they might be involved in the business, but they did also happen to be married to whoever else was yeah. operating the business. So I like, I get it, but on that side of things, but also like, don't assume that about everybody. Yeah. Because for my, it's annoying for me. I hate that. Yeah. I hate, and I didn't realize that I, I didn't realize that was going to be a thing until <laughs> we went to deck expo and everyone was like, you're his wife. N oh no you're his wife you're like what no, about no, no, that, no, guy that guy over guy? there the, that waiter you must be that man's wife whose yeah. wife are you you must work here that as like a server or something <laughs> yeah. you, oh you don't you don't know anything about carpentry <laughs> obviously um <sighs> it's also interesting yeah. because i've talked to a lot of people that have hired women within their carpentry or trade business mm -hmm. and anybody that has they always say I want to hire more women because they're just like, they get distracted less. They're more driven. They're more yeah. focused. They, you know, they're just like better employees. So it's like this dichotomy. Yeah. The people that do have <laughs> women within their business are like, they're super valuable part of our business. We'd love to hire more women, even in the field or in the office. But then there's other people that are just like, oh, you're a lady. You must be somebody's <laughs> wife or you must be, uh, just lost or something. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I had yeah. several conversations about people saying that they're like, we, we can't find women. We want to hire women. How do we find women? So it's, you know, I think that the need, the want is there. I think that, you know, it's just like, it'll just take time, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. 
I'm all fired up. I didn't mean to go into this rant about it, but I, I, if it makes you feel any better, um, I had at least, and you might have saw them anyway, cause you have access to, you know, my DMS and stuff, but a, at least a few people reached out just super intrigued by your position within the company that you are like this Swiss army knife that's in the field sometimes that does a lot of the content mm -hmm. video stuff that does contracts that, that does like a little bit of everything. And people were really interested in finding somebody like that. Yeah. Raven builders was like, Hey, you know, he, I think he, did he say he has somebody like that now? And that he's, he's bringing a deck see. expo. Oh, I forget. No, I didn't see, but <gasps> he's got a lady. I think he does. I think he has a Catherine. Oh. You're starting a wave oh my gosh. in this industry. Scheller outdoor. He was like really intrigued by it. He wanted to jump on a call. Um, about finding somebody to fill a position like that. So well, that's amazing. Yeah, I think it is. You're making changes. I think, oh, God, Maybe. I hope so. I don't know. That'd be cool if I was. Yeah. But um, yeah, other ladies, if ladies are listening to this, reach out to me. Cause <laughs> She's lonely. She's a lonely uh, lost lady yeah. in a uh, man's land. Yeah. And it's very scary for her. <laughs> so please, somebody I'm reach out for I'm her lost. safety. No, uh, it doesn't. Ultimately, none of this bothers me. I do not care. It doesn't phase me, but I would like to see a change made. And I'm happy to, to help. Make Part that of me thinks happens. that you you don't actually want a change to happen because you are so fueled, I by, am fueled by the vengeance. Yeah, because every time it happens, some sort of confrontation. Yeah, like you, you get so <laughs> fired up about it. I feel like uh, you've you've come to really enjoy you seek out these opportunities. People, You're yeah. just like grilling people like you're going to say hi to me. <laughs> no, oh, you sexist man. <laughs> I'm going to use this as fuel yep. to take you down. Watch out for my memoir <laughs> one day. Uh oh. Um, all right. So is that enough about right, HNA? That's enough. And, uh, and, and sexism. Taking down the, yeah. the patio patriarchy. <laughs> I think that's, that's pretty enough. good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What else? Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about? Um, yeah. I wanted to talk about. So at HNA or at even Deck Expo. Um, it seems like there's a lot of like commingling of industries happening. And I don't know yeah. if that's like a recent thing or um, we had a conversation with a guy who was kind of in the industry, I guess more on the peripheral kind of way, but then he started doing pools. And he I wasn't in the industry at all. If you're the man that I'm thinking of. Oh, he wasn't. The, the guy that uh, is like river pools or something. Hopefully he listens to the podcast. Yeah. I, can't I can't remember his, his name, but he was in like St. Louis or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought he was in the industry and then he just started taking on pools. He said he was like a software guy and decided oh. to buy a buy a pool franchise. Okay. Well, that doesn't lend well to my point, but. Oh, well. Oh, sorry. Anyway. Continue. <laughs> Forget that. Yeah. He was like on the peripheral well, of the biz yeah. and then. Well, it just seems like a lot of people are taking on more things like a lot like landscapers now will do Christmas lights in the. So yeah. it's like just looking for different ways to diversify your business, I guess. Mm -hmm. And like uh, Deck Expo, it's combined with the pool, spa, something. What's it called? The pool and spa. Pool, spa, party. It is like PSP. I don't know what the last P stands for. <laughs> pool and spa professionals. I was patio, but that's not right. I don't know. I don't know, but it's a pool thing. And a lot of um, like deck builders or outdoor living builders are now starting to take on pools because pools are in such high demand that they're yeah. getting their licensure or whatever you need. Um, and uh, we always preach like niching your business down is like the best way. It seems counterintuitive, but to grow. But I thought that that was really interesting to kind of do other things that might complement your business. Like for us, obviously we would not become like a pool company that starts doing 200 pools a year or whatever. Yeah. But if we had the ability to not use a subcontractor and just do our own pools, like because a lot of our, clients do want pools yeah that would be kind of a cool opportunity so i wanted to get your thoughts on on that that is really interesting because we do talk about the idea of niching down a lot and it's been a focus of mine in the business for many years but there's so many different ways that you can look at that idea of niching down mm -hmm. you can niche down to you know one specific task that you do like you are just somebody that comes in and does spackle on walls. You don't even hang the drywall. I don't, they probably don't call it spackle. There's probably they call it mud in the industry, I think. <laughs> but like you just is go that a up. guy? That's the thing though. Yeah, somebody who just tapers. Does? Tapers is what they call them. 
They tape. And that's all they do? They just tape and spackle. They don't wow. hang. They just tape and spackle. Okay. So that is like something, that's an example of niching down to a very specific task. You get so good at it. You mm-hmm. know all the tools. You know everything about it so that you can be as efficient as possible and you just tackle that one thing. I think what we have developed our niche into is niching down to a very specific type of project and very specific type of client. Mm -hmm. So within that, I do think that there is like some room to introduce new things that might seem like a completely different trade, like doing pool installations. Yeah. I I don't think that we're ready to do that at this point, but I don't want to rule it out because it, every time that we have had a pool installation as part of a project that we're doing, it has not gone smoothly. Yeah. Every other pool company sucks. No offense. Probably not the guy we met. He seemed like a nice guy. He seemed super nice and like he was doing it right. Yeah. And he said he wanted to start the company because he was trying to get a pool and the experience was terrible. Yeah. So that's something to think about. I do think there is an opportunity there in some capacity to expand your services as long as it's serving to a certain end yeah you know like with us we are trying to give people that full turnkey outdoor living space and i think doing something like pools or at the very least finding a really really good subcontractor that we work with that we can communicate with would be a really good addition to what we're what we're trying to build for our clients and for our business yeah what do you think I agree with that. And I think like for us, we don't stop in the winter. So I definitely see a need for people like when, like the landscapers who do Christmas lights, that yeah. just makes perfect sense. You get to keep working. Um, pools always scare me because it just does seem, and I guess it's just because you're doing one really giant thing. So like if something goes wrong, it's like one really giant thing. And then it's, it's yeah. like a huge liability to take on, but all the pool installers say it's super easy. So it's not, I guess if you're doing it correctly, then things don't go wrong. But yeah, um, but yeah, it just seems like it would it would make sense. And and dealing with these pool subs has been not ideal. Not <laughs> ideal. It's been far from ideal. Far from ideal. It's it's been such a pain. So I don't know. I think that there. I feel like there's something there. I agree. I agree. And that is that's another interesting thing, like the fact that something really big could go wrong. Mm-hmm. with doing a pool installation like there's this big mental barrier of entry yeah just you know what it's i mean a big thing it's a big yeah you're just you're doing probably way less steps than like building a deck or something but that seems so small in comparison to yeah. a pool they're huge a pool is huge <laughs> and a crane that's like a whew, that's it's commitment. a whole thing and there is this if something goes wrong i think everyone goes into any new venture with that mentality of well, what if something goes wrong? What is like my what is my backstop? What is my my safeguard from, you know, just completely messing this up? And I looked at decks and patios, paver patios especially, there was like this bit of a safeguard that okay, most of the time, you know, I'm I'm going to do the base as good as I can. I'm going to I'm going to really do it. But there might be certain spots where we have a little bit of settlement. Okay, worst case scenario, I can pull up those pavers, I can assess it, I can address what the problem is, I can reinstall them, and everything's good to go. Where one thing, when I first started, I never got into doing concrete because that was like, it's all or nothing. You either know what you're doing, you do it in a very fast, you know, efficient manner, Mm. and you get it done. If you mess up, you got a big problem on your hands. Yeah. As I was talking to that guy who does the pools, he said he had that situation come up where they installed a pool and it was actually a situation where the homeowner acted as the general contractor and Mm -hmm. they handled a bunch of the subs. Somebody that did the patios like pitched it towards the pool. It led to an accumulation of water draining around the bottom of the pool and it pushed the whole shell up out of the ground. But the good guy that this guy was, or at least seemed to be, he put that on his on his own business. He said, okay, you know, there are a lot of ways I could potentially get out of this and say, well, 
you know, it's really a drainage issue that caused this problem. We didn't do the pavers. That's your problem. But he took it as a learning lesson and said, okay, I'm going to learn from this. I'm not going to let somebody else dictate, you know, what's Mm -hmm. going on around the pool because it is going to affect my work. Right. So he went in, he fixed it. He learned the lesson from it. You know, we're going to take control of what happens around the project. We're not going to let a homeowner GC this anymore. So that was a cool learning experience for him. But it also, as we're talking to him, made me think, you know, he was explaining what he had to do to pick this out of the ground. You know, it took him, you know, a couple days. There's been plenty of things that have taken us a couple days to like work backwards a little bit to fix whether, uh, you know, a wall is in the wrong spot or we realize that something isn't lining up, whatever it is, lots of things happen like that, but it just seems like this culmination of smaller pieces that you're dismantling seems a lot easier to stomach than picking a whole pool up out of the ground, resetting it. When in reality, we've done plenty of stuff that has taken just as long to redo. And I think that that is a big barrier of entry for a lot of people, including myself that just looks at it. And it's like this huge pool. It's so scary. Yeah. When really it's like, you know, I don't want to oversimplify it, but it's this big fiberglass shell. It's got a bunch of hoses connected to it. Bing, bang, boom. You got a pool. <laughs> you fill it with water. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I think I think there is something there that maybe maybe we could at some point try it out. Yeah. I don't know. I think we should try. We're always about trying new things. We are? I don't know what kind. Yeah, I think we, we, I think oh, we okay. like that. We I still do doing think that? We, I think so. We're still yeah. doing that trying new things thing? I, th- okay. I don't think we've run out of new things to try yet, but... We got to be getting close. Maybe that will happen. <laughs> we got to be getting close. <laughs> but yeah, I think that um I don't know. I I'd, I'd like to try it. I would I I don't know what kind of like licensure you need in this None. state. You can just do it. Yeah, you don't need in New Jersey like you really don't need anything to do anything. Hmm. You just got to like, get the permit and then you're good. You got to get the permit. You you have to be a licensed home improvement contractor, but all that means is that you Prove you have insurance and you pay like, I think it's like $90 a year okay. for a license. There's nothing Well, you're else. already that, so. I'm already that, so I'm good. We're good. Yeah. All right, so, cool. Something to think about. Yeah. And I feel like people will just, I don't know. Our last client just wanted us to build a tiny house, which is not something we do or have done. But she just had full faith in us faith in us that we could build her this cool tiny house, which I'm not saying we couldn't. I think that we absolutely could. And it's oh, just like, a, it's a culmination of other skills that you already have. So I feel like a pool is like. It's like the same thing. It's a culmination of skills we already have. And you are like obsessed with heavy machinery. I am, yeah. We would ha- you would have to be leading the charge on like <sighs> excavating and stuff like that. Nothing would make me happier. Okay. I we'll get you in a machine. A, and a tilt-a-tater. <laughs> tilt-a-tater. <laughs> we'll have to look into that, but... A tilt-a-tater is a tilt-rotator. I don't know why we started calling it that, but for the people out there... Because it sounds cooler. It does sound cooler, yeah. Yeah. I think that it's a missed opportunity. It should be called a tilt-a-tater. Tilt a tater. So that's what we call it. Yeah. I said that at H and A to like Andy Mulder. He has a tilt a tater. Yeah. And I called it that. And he's like, ah, that's hilarious. He liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, it just makes sense. Tilt rotator. Yeah. Tilt o tater. Tilt a tater. It just sound, it just rolls off. I think it was a missed opportunity by them. Tilt rotator is hard to say. Tilt rotator. Yeah. Tilt that's rotator. just silly. Too many consonants right in a row. I agree. All right. Uh do you think we covered that enough? Uh, yeah, I think so. You think what so? What do you got? What do you got going on this week? I got, I got, really? I got so much. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much. Uh, <sighs> you know what? I think it's, I think it's time for me to just get vulnerable. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> this You're podcast has vulnerable. become my little confession booth. <laughs> uh, I was in a bit of a funk. When was that? Wednesday? Yeah. No. <laughs> Me, I was, I'm going to admit it. I know you probably didn't even notice. I didn't even notice you no. probably didn't even notice i was in a bit of a <laughs> funk but i was in a little bit of a funk it's a very you're feeling very funky. extremely <laughs> busy time of year because it's yeah. design season we have an issue with our next project that we yeah. unexpectedly need a grading plan by an engineer to start the project so and that's going to take some time it's going to take about two weeks so yeah. it set us back uh all this stuff happening at once and probably one of the toughest things for me is timelines. Would yeah. you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. So we have all these designs to do. 
I yeah. had two designs due this week. I have two more due on Monday. Yeah. So a really difficult thing for me is to do things in a manner that I'm like leading up to that due date. So have it just about done the day before it's due. So then I can put the finishing touches on it. I can put together all the numbers right. in a bid estimate and I can send it out. But it it really stresses me out. It's one of the hardest things in business for me is to just be there doing all of these things and not feel like super overwhelmed. Yeah. So it does put me into a funk when I know that like that pressure's on, especially with designs, because these people have waited on a wait list. They've responded to multiple emails yeah. to make sure that they continue to be on a wait list. I've talked to them. They've paid $2,500 for a design and they've never even met me in person. So there's a lot that they're doing out of just trust and faith. So I feel like there is a huge expectation from them to me to deliver something that's really going to wow them. So combine that with multiple designs due in a very short period of time and making sure that I spend adequate time on each design. It's something that really stresses me out. Yeah. It stresses me out a lot. And, uh, you know, I let it, I let it get the best of me this week. Yeah. For that, that's I, okay. for that's... that, I do apologize. <laughs> you were a bit funky and that's, that's yeah. fine. Being in a funk every once in a while is fine. And I think this is the lesson learned for next week. I think that the way that we have done design season, I think it's great. And I think that, yeah, it's still going to work, but I think next time what we'll do is make sure that the time where you're doing the designs falls within the middle of a job because I think having it at the end of this job slash beginning of a new job and having all these designs do, I think that's, that's where you're, yeah, I think no matter what you're going to be stressed with doing designs. Yeah. I think if, if we spread them out, that would still stress you out because then it's just constantly doing something that's like always like a lingering <laughs> nagging thing that's I on agree. your back. Yeah. So I think grouping them is still good, but I think maybe making sure that they're in the middle of, I agree. A job would be better for next year. I agree. And I think one of the things that makes it feel the most overwhelming is it is a lot of tasks grouped together in one time period Yeah, that I can't really delegate. I would love to yeah. say, hey, Catherine, can you do this design for me? I'm behind. Yeah. But that's like a, a one thing that I have to do by myself. Yeah. I have to complete that, you know, dealing with the... Dealing with, well, I mean, you can help with dealing with the next client a little bit and dealing with, you know, finding an engineer. But that was something I was kind of doing as well. And there was just like so much stuff going on that that made me feel super overwhelmed. Plus, we had just gone away to HNA. Yeah. We were away for a couple of days. So it took me a couple of days, probably till today. I was in a funk for like two days. Mm -hmm. And then you were sick yesterday. So I didn't even have the van. Yeah. I was trying to do a design like in my truck. <laughs> that actually turned out to be all right. Because I, I, I do apologize. <laughs> I went out and, and I sat on the, the basket chairs outside. Mm -hmm. And I was, it was actually pretty nice. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty sweet. Um, But yeah, that's, that's just, uh, I was feeling very overwhelmed. Feeling yeah. a little anxious about it. And I think, I think at the end of the day, that's pretty normal. If you're running agree, a business, yeah. there's going to be times where a lot of stuff, no matter how good you are at delegating or doing this or that, there's going to be a whole lot of either tasks or responsibility that's on your shoulders at some point. Yeah. And I think if you care a lot about your clients, about your employees, you're going to it's going to be hard to manage that to a certain extent. And I think that's what it was. I feel this huge obligation to our clients, both the current the clients that we're currently working for and all of these clients, future clients that are paying for a design, I feel like I need to give them my best. So it's just a lot to, uh, to give of yourself, I think. Yeah. And I think a lot of business owners can vibe with that and feel, you know, they felt that way before. Oh, definitely. So you're not alone. Thanks for being vulnerable, Sean. <laughs> you, you're welcome. You're welcome. I think it's totally normal. And I think that did you on the scale of things, you uh you don't get funky that often. And it's it's really? become so? it's it's come predictable like when I I know it's gonna be a bad day or whatever because not a bad day. That's that's not the right word, but you know, funky day. Yeah. 
when we get to the end of the job or whatever. Yeah. Um, and they don't happen that often. So I think that you're, good. I think you're doing something right. You know what the worst thing about it is? How annoying I get. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's probably it because everybody else, <laughs> everybody else, I can just like come into work and be like, oh, what's going on guys? Uh, all right. Yeah, we're doing this. Okay. Yeah, we're doing that. For whatever reason, as soon as I step in the van, you're like, what's wrong? What's the, what's with the vibes? And it's just like, well, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm fine. And you're like, you're not fine. What's wrong? Tell me right now. And then it's like, I have to fully confront these inner demons of overwhelming anxiety. I do. I do need to stop vibe checking people. It's yeah. we have possibly created a culture of toxic positivity <laughs> in the van. And as soon as anything's like the tiniest bit, yeah. not extremely positive, it's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Something has to be wrong. What's wrong? Personal or professional. Yeah. You love the, the business or personal. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. But I didn't feel good today because, well, I didn't feel good yesterday. And then I didn't, I still don't feel good. And uh, I went to work and you through. did, you did the same thing to me today. <laughs> So yeah, that was just a little bit of vengeance. <laughs> okay, that was fair. that was like a vibe that check to fair. you. <laughs> like, oh, you're sick. Oh, <laughs> poor Catherine. See, that's why ladies shouldn't be in the industry. They get <laughs> sick too often with like scarlet fever. <laughs> scarlet fever. Yeah, you would die on the Oregon Trail. Did you ever play I don't that think game? So. Yeah, I did. That was awesome. You always died of like dysentery or something. Oh yeah, probably I'm scarlet not, fever. I don't know. Prob- I don't know what either of those things are. But I don't think anyone does because I don't think they exist anymore. That's good. <laughs> Thanks to modern That's medicine. Good. That's real good. But uh, that was always the best. In like second grade computer class, oh, you're yeah. like, we're going to play Oregon Trail. Yeah. Like, you got sweet. a free day or whatever they uh, call it. Yeah. <laughs> it was looking back. It's probably just when the, the teacher was hung over yeah. or something. Yeah, kids, you can do whatever you want. Yep. <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> you know, that actually brings up something really interesting. So um, I just got done reading David Goggins book can't hurt me Uh uh-huh and one thing that he talked about in the book was he's becoming this navy seal and he like he does the the most insane physical uh achievements that you can possibly imagine just puts his body through the most insane rigorous things Mm -hmm. ever conceived and he had this point where he was in the navy seals and he always had them on this like absurdly high pedestal of like superhuman capability and once he got there he found out that he was like one of the people going the hardest that was like always trying to push himself to as absolutely far as he possibly could and he had this like realization that when you meet somebody that you've always looked up to and held in this super high regard you realize that they're just like human at the end of the day and they're kind of just like you yeah you know what i mean and i think it's weird, especially like when young kids came up to me at h and they were almost like, oh my God, like I l- love your work. Like you inspire me so much. And it was like, it's kind of weird because I'm like, I don't like, I'm just figuring this stuff out as I go. Like I don't have it all figured out by any means. And I feel the same way when I meet somebody that I look up to so much. It's almost like until you meet them in person, you you like look at them as somebody that's like beyond human. Yeah. That that isn't just like you. And I don't know what I'm really getting at, but I th- I think it's just <laughs> that like when you're networking with people that are in the industry, especially people that you look up to, yeah. that you have like followed and you you just love whatever they've done, whether the way they've built their business or personal achievements that they have, it's once you meet them in, in person, you realize they're just human like you. Yeah. And it like puts things in perspective that you can achieve that too. You know what I mean? There's not something like insanely novel about them or they don't have this ridiculous God-given skill set. A lot of times it's just a culmination of hard work. Yeah. And when you see that in person, I think it helps put it in perspective that if you work hard, you can get there too. Absolutely. What do you think about that? I think that that was very profound, Sean. You think so? I don't know where that came from. I don't we were know. just talking about the Oregon Trail. But yeah, that's <laughs> the or- the, you'll get a lot of <laughs> profound thoughts on the Oregon Trail. <laughs> you're traveling across the wild frontier. You don't know where you're going. Mm-hmm. You barely remember where you came from. There's no turning back. No turning back. You've got eight kids in the back of the wagon. <laughs> Six of them already died of dysentery or whatever. 
Uh, yeah, but that's that's very true. Yeah. And I think that, uh, yeah, it was nice for all the people to stop and like and like um, we talked to kids who were I don't I shouldn't say kids they were adults they were like but they were like eighteen, like 18 or yeah. something and they were doing a competition and it was so cool and and they loved all your stuff and it was really nice to see like yeah the next generation and and they're probably going to do cool stuff that the next generation is going to see and exactly they'll look up to them and be like wow exactly and it was really cool because it was a male and female team it was there was a female hardscaper there it was yeah. competing and they were there with like their professor or something yeah they were going to like some landscape type of school and i didn't know that existed i didn't either. i didn't want to ask because <laughs> yeah. we were like in this like very loud concert thing when they were talking about yeah. it and they kept saying this is my professor and what and i was like i can't i didn't want to lean in and be like are you sure this guy's like accredited <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but i think they went what to like of university of massachusetts and uh i don't know maybe they listened to the podcast i don't know, yeah, I don't know. but uh they were super nice. I wish I remembered their names, but uh, the chick was rocking some pit vipers when we saw her the next day in the parking lot. That was pretty was sweet. Yeah. <laughs> pretty cool. Pretty sweet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was really cool to like just see some young people that yeah. were like super passionate. And I don't know if he was just saying it because I was he was talking to me, but he's like, you probably inspire me more than anybody else. And Aww. it was like, whether it was made up or not, felt it nice. was it felt nice. <laughs> and it was also like. Dude, I was literally in your shoes. Like, you have so much more experience than I had when I was like 26. Yeah. Or 27, even. And he's 18 and he's competing in a hardscape installation thing. So it's yeah. like, if you just like put your head down and do the work, you're going to be light years ahead of me by the time you're 34. So, yeah. I think it's all about perspective. And when you can meet people in person and you can just see that. You can like, it's easier to like see their, their vulnerabilities or their faults or that they're just another person when you talk to them, yeah. at least most of the people. And it can be really helpful to, you know, just keep you going. Yeah. Realize that that's achievable and so much more. Yeah. It's very humanizing. Yeah. yeah. That's why everyone should go to trade shows. They're great. I agree. I agree. They're really, really great. All right. Well, uh, I th do you think that we've rambled on long enough? I think so. I think I, I, I think believe that we rambling. have. Uh, you know what it's time for, everybody? Secret question. The secret question. The secret question. What do you got? You got something oh, for me? I was me? hoping you were going to I first. went first last time, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work this time. Oh, it's not? Okay. Mr. Collins grew. Okay. Do you want me to go first? I do, yeah. Okay. Speaking of somebody that you looked up to... Um, have you ever had a situation where you have looked up to somebody and held them in such a high regard and then either met them or they did something that kind of like shattered that perfect image of them? Oh, what do you got? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. You like that? Um, yeah. Just thought of it. Thanks. Huh. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a great question and I can't think of like any specific necessary like necessarily any specific people but um when i lived in los angeles i you kind of just run into a lot of like this sounds like a weird humble brag but like you just run into a lot of famous people or at the time i was dating someone who worked with a lot of like quote unquote famous people so i would meet these people and they were all very like at the end of the day you realize they're just human like it's not like, like once you meet these people, it's like it kind of like removes a veil. So I feel like I can't think of any specific examples of of them like shattering my my um view of them view of them. But but I feel like it was just it, it was very humbling to know that like no one's better than you. No one's worse than you and no one's better than you. We're all in the same playing field. And just it's because true. they have like fame or whatever, it doesn't mean that they're any like cooler or better than you. Or happier. Or happier. Definitely not happier. Yeah. That's something to keep in perspective. Yeah. Is would that be uh like a situation where you'd say kill your idols? Is that kind of like a what is that, sex pistols? I'm not is sure. Is that kind of how that comes into play? <laughs> I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. You don't what? <laughs> is it a song? Like punk rock, like kill your idols? I mm. think it's uh I think it's from Sex Pistols. Okay. You can maybe maybe do a Google on that I'll later. Google, I don't know. Yeah. People probably know what I'm talking about. It's, it's like in the zeitgeist. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I just, uh, every, at the end of the day, everybody's human and no one's better than you and no one's worse than you. And that's how you should always carry yourself. Did you? That's my, that's yeah. my view. Did 
did you look at was there like a, a a transformation within your own mind when you did meet a lot of these people and especially realizing maybe they're not happier than you are like did oh that gosh, kind of absolutely. like break something down like these people have achieved so much of what's you know normal people would be like this is success in some some way shape or form and they don't seem happier what did that do for you yeah break it down um so this is like a very weird story and i won't go into too much detail and bore everybody but there was this one night we went to um a 30 seconds to mars concert i loved 30 seconds to mars at the time we is that went- jared leto jared leto yeah. yes um we went with this guy who was on dancing with the stars and so he was like VIP, blah, blah, blah. It was like a Halloween party. We went to this party. There were all these famous people. I was just like in awe, like the whole night. It was so cool. It was at this really cool place. Everything was paid for. I was like, this is the best day. This is so cool. And that the guy that cool. we went with, he just cared about like status and like upping his status and like wanting to be around the most famous people there or, and he was miserable the entire time. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, we are both having the exact same experience and I'm like so in awe and I'm like, this is so cool. I'm having so much fun. And, and he was like, just trying to like hustle and be miserable the whole time. And I was like, that's huh. really interesting. Cause this guy seemingly has everything. Like he's, you know, people know his name. He's like, whatever. He just seemed so, so unhappy. And it just blew my mind. Like I, you know, something so simple made me so happy. And I thought this was so cool. Yeah. And then this guy who's got everything. I'm pretty simple at heart, like a f- free food spread and free yeah. drinks. I know, uh, yeah. They usually have these at, at like conventions. I couldn't be happier. Yeah. Anytime that food and, and beverages are supplied, <laughs> I am That's happy as need. a clam. I know. It's great. So, okay. Well. And we had good concert tickets. I was like, this is so fun. Oh, yeah. How do you like network and stuff while concerts going on? Well, the, we went to that, the concert first, and then afterwards. After party. After party. Oh, okay. At, uh, that makes sense. Chateau Marmont. Chateau Marmont? Where, uh... <laughs> I'm not from. This turning into, like, a very s- bizarre... Uh, Conversation? No. Well, yeah, but rabbit hole. Okay. That we've just gone down. Anyway, so what's your what's your celeb story? I would say... Uh, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head, really, except for the time that I met a Jonas brother. What? <laughs> yeah. A Jonas brother. A Jonas brother in Joe New bro. York City. Okay. Uh, I was shopping at uh, uh, a store called Top Man. Top Man. Top Man. Have you ever heard of Top Shop? Yes. This That's is the, the man version? The man version of okay. Top Shop. So I'm there... I'm walking around. I come down the escalator and I do that thing where you're like, oh, nope. Oh, you go. Nope. Oh, and you go oh. the other way. You know, the awkward <laughs> shuffle. Yeah. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, we, we, we split separate ways. And I say to Sarah, I'm like, that was a Jonas brother. And she's like, no, it's not. That's not a Jonas brother. I'm like, that was one of the Jonas <laughs> brothers. I know it. And which one? Uh, I can't remember. Maybe Kevin. The middle one. Maybe Joe. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. Okay. And But I knew it was the Jonas Brother. <laughs> and she was like, no, it's not. And then we did some research. We followed him around the store a little bit. <laughs> she looked up like who his <laughs> wife was and that was her. And, uh, you know, and he also had like a Twitter update that said like shopping in New York City today. And wow. that, um, I mean, this isn't really that, that that profound of a story but it was it took like the shine off because you guys were shopping at the same store n- well that and uh i don't think i ended up buying anything but, uh, <laughs> i had like no money back then <laughs> at all but uh you know one of the most human things that you can do is the awkward shuffle with somebody when you are walking that opposite directions <laughs> and you realize that uh you know kevin jonas or <laughs> whichever one it was <laughs> he has to endure that as well and eventually He's the one that stopped and let me go. So, oh, sorry, okay. Kev. <laughs> Hate to do it to you. Energy got yeah. <laughs> he felt the iron warrior within me, and he was like, "I'm gonna let this guy go." Um, all right, so that was like the most <laughs> random, non sequitur, yeah, answer that I could have possibly given, but uh, it's the only thing that came to mind. So, shout out to the, the Joe Bros. Uh, shout out Joe Bros. But I was really surprised because I was like, "That was definitely a Jones brother." She's like, "You don't have any idea what you're talking about." And I was like, that was definitely Joe's brother. I would bet my life on it. And it was. I'm impressed you knew and she didn't. 
Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> they have a look about them. You they can do. Just tell. They do, yeah. You can just tell. And so. I do see where you could confuse them because they all do like look vaguely similar. Yeah. So I knew it was one of them. I didn't one know which them. one, yeah. but I was like, that's one of them. I know it's one of them. <laughs> the other two have to be around here somewhere. Okay. Uh, what do you they got for me? in packs. Yeah. Um, okay. It'll be a miracle if anyone is still listening at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My secret question. What do yeah. you think? Okay. What is your most, what do you think your most annoying trait is? <sighs> and what do you think my most annoying trait is? Wow. That is such <laughs> a amazing good question <laughs> my most annoying trait i would say like this is kind of a cop-out answer but uh-huh. it's just being annoying <laughs> like sometimes i get in a mood and you know what i'm talking about where i'm just annoying on purpose and i can't help it i really can't <laughs> and it's been a part of me for a long time and it's never yeah. going away like sometimes i just <laughs> i'll just like i'm trying to think of an example like you'll say something and I'll pretend like I don't know what you're talking about. And I'll ask like the dumbest question you could possibly even conceive. <laughs> and I'll, and I'll just be really annoying. Just, just really punish everyone around me, uh, that has to cross my, my way at that time. That's probably my most annoying trait. Is that you are annoying? Yeah. Okay. And I don't know how to, how otherwise to explain it, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You know exactly what I'm talking about. I get in these moods where I'm just like, I am just, I'm just out there just being annoying for the sake of being annoying. And it makes me laugh and be happy. So you all have to deal with it because I'm boss. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something very specific though. Can you think of anything? Um, I guess that's not the point of the secret question. You can't answer it. Well, I have to answer for you too. Uh, like you answer what you, what's okay. annoying about you and then you answer what's annoying about me. And then I answer what's annoying about you oh, and what's annoying about me. Okay. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> All right. The most annoying thing about you is... ah, uh, I don't know if this is annoying or just distracting, but the absurd <laughs> amount of belching that you do. I think you need to go to a gastroenterologist. <laughs> you burp more say. than anybody <laughs> I've ever been around. And... Uh, <laughs> it's fair. I don't know if when you first started working in the van, you were like, oh, excuse me. Well, I did a little burp. Now you're just like, Rah! and it's like, and it's just like so <laughs> frequently, and I don't know what's causing it, but it seems like a medical issue at this point. Uh, <laughs> should I keep going on? More no, things? I think we, well, if you want. I can't really think of anything <laughs> else. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's okay. Not- I think so. Okay. All right. What do you got for me? What's the most <laughs> annoying thing about me? Um. Well, you can say your trait first. My most annoying trait about myself. Yeah. Um. Oh, I do so many annoying things. Um. What was the thing that you thought I was going to say? That I, my vibe checks, my constant vibe checks. No, I've come to rely on those. <laughs> <laughs> That's like that's like my my safety net. I know that I will get vibe checked before my vibe gets too low because it's vibe check like immediately as soon as I get to work every day. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's. I fine. feel like that. Okay, well then I'm gonna say that's my most annoying trait because as soon as like if any if anybody's in a slightly downturned mood, like as soon as you get in the van, I'm like, ants in a bat, ants his vibes down. We gotta what do we <laughs> we gotta do something to fix yeah. it. It's never my responsibility to do anything, nor can yeah. I. But yeah. uh, I take it upon myself to do that. Yeah. So I find that to be very annoying within myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and your most annoying trait. There's going to be a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I think recently it's been this. You've brought this giant water bottle. To work. <laughs> it's comically big. It's like, I don't know how big it's it is. It's a whole gallon. It weighs like. 40 pounds it's so heavy and so huge and when you drink out of it it is so distractingly loud yeah and i've been taking lots of pills yeah. i take 11 pills at a time i have my yeah. my fiber pills <laughs> <laughs> they just they're great you got to get on the fiber pills the psyllium husk oh yeah take 10 Are of those so bad regular? boys a day <laughs> yeah you'll be even more regular than you <laughs> thought you were when you were regular and um it keeps you feeling full Oh, it's great. Okay. And then I got, I take four focus factor. <laughs> <laughs> Jury is out on if that's working, but 
that was an impulse buy at Costco. <laughs> and uh, I also got some, uh, I forget what it's, it's chondroitin and... Uh, oh, glucosamine and chondroitin? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. my joints are getting old. Got to keep those things Gotta lubed up. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I take all of those 11 pills at once. Yep. And uh, <laughs> I chase it down with, <laughs> I have a humong, I'll, I'll bring it next week so that people can see it. Yeah. It's huge. And it sounds, he sounds like those like <laughs> gifts of when like a kid is drinking and it's like, <laughs> like, they're just, like they've never drank water before. That's what Sean sounds like at a very audible level yeah. within our tiny van. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad I know that. I've already expressed you. <laughs> you have. And uh, when I feel like I'm in an, a mood to be annoying. <laughs> That's where you're going. I got a new go to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can just do that. Fair. Fair like enough. For a comically long period of time. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we've delivered what we promised, which was getting our squirrely energy out. I think so, yeah. I think the shot helped with the squirrely energy. I felt... Well, you had like none of yours. Yeah, it's still... (laughs) (laughs) More than I ever drink on this podcast. That's pathetic. Okay, well, next week we're going to... What? I think we should propose... Speaking of that, we wanted to do an episode where we get drunk, like like a, a drunk history type episode. Yeah. I kind of wanted to get the people's feelings on that. Okay. If you've listened this far, you must be a diehard <laughs> fan because we have gone off the rails yep. many moons ago. Yes. Uh, let us know if we should really get turned up for, we were thinking about doing it for a Q and a episode so yeah. we can like <laughs> really, best, you know, yeah. just break all the barriers down and we'll tell you all <laughs> of our secrets or whatever. Cause we'll be drunk and we won't know what's yeah. happening, but we thought that could be funny. Yeah. And fun. It'd be fun for us. I don't know if it'd be fun to listen to. (laughs) Yeah, maybe, maybe (laughs) not. We won't care. Uh, Okay, so let us know about that. Yeah. Again, leave us a review. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. Follow us on LinkedIn. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us personally with GPS. Just make sure that we're... (laughs) Air tag us. Yeah, Yeah. track our whereabouts. Make sure that we're safe. (laughs) And uh, I guess, is that it? I think that's it. Oh, Thank you for listening this far. (laughs) Thank you so much, everybody. And until next time, this has been the Hardworking Happy Hour. See you next week.